Welcome to Angel Health Academy. Subject Community Health Nursing 1. Topic for the session is or topic for the day is Epidemiological Triad. It is also known as Epidemiological Triangle. So let us talk about Epidemiological Triad. In this video, I would like to talk about the introduction of the topic Components of Epidemiological Triad that is Agent Host Environment and in detail or in depth about the agent definition, classification of agents, then host meaning and classification of host related factors and environment and environment related factors. First is introduction. So before we discuss about epidemiological triad or epidemiological triangle, we have to talk about concept of disease. So let us see what is the meaning of concept of disease. Concept of diseases is a condition of the body. So it is a condition of our body or some part of the body. So it is a condition of the total body or some part of the body or different organs of the body, organ of the body in which its functions are deranged that is malfunctioned. So disturbed in which its functions are disturbed that is deranged. So in other meaning it is a maladjustment of an organism that is human being to the or towards its environment. So concept of disease is a maladjustment. So adjustmental problem or adjustment difficulties of an organism or a human being with its environment or towards its environment. In other words or in other term or in other meaning it is a deviation from the normal function of the body or normal purpose of the body. So it is a deviation from the normal function and the purposes. So concept of disease is a condition of the body or some part of the body or different organs of the body in which its functions are deranged or it is disturbed. Otherwise it is a maladjustment of an organism or human being or man to its environment or it is a deviation from the normal function of the human body or normal purpose of the human body. Now let us discuss what is the meaning of disease causation or causation of disease that is any event or condition characteristics or combination of various factors which plays an important role in initiating or developing or producing a disease process in a man in a human being is called as disease causation. So any event or condition characteristics or combination of various characteristics or factors which plays an important role in initiating, initiating means beginning, starting and producing a disease process in a human being is called as disease causation. So usually the disease is caused to may not by a single factor, it is often comprises with several factors or several components. For example, in case of food poisoning, that is most probably due to salmonella. The presence of salmonella is a necessary cause that is very important without salmonella we may not have a disease so it is an agent so the presence of salmonella is a necessary cause but the contaminated food for example the salad contaminated food is the sufficient cause so we need both necessary cause and sufficient causes to uh, produce a disease in a human body. So the cause of a disease may not be a single factor. It often comprises with several components. So there are many concepts, models or theories of disease causation in epidemiology. Thus let us talk about concepts, models or theories of disease causation. In epidemiology there are several concepts, several models or theories of disease causation or causation of disease which help to understand the disease process or occurrence of the various diseases. The most widely used or applied general models of causation. So the most widely used or famous general models of causation are first one is germ theory of disease then epidemiological triad or epidemiological triangle multifactorial causation theory the wheel model the web model the sufficient cause and component cause models then the diverse epidemiological model and there are many other general models of causation. So in this video I would like to talk about the epidemiological triad as a concept or model or theories of disease causation. So epidemiological triad is a concept or it is a model or it is a theory for disease causation. That's what we have discussed what is disease and causation of disease. So let us discuss in detail about the epidemiological triad. So epidemiological triad or triangle is the traditional model. It is a traditional concept. So it is a traditional model of 
infectious or communicable disease causation. So, especially to talk about the how a communicable disease or infectious disease caused. So, epidemiological triad or triangle is the traditional model of infectious or communicable disease causation. So, cause of various communicable diseases and or infectious diseases. Then, according to this theory, that is epidemiological triad model, everyone exposed to disease agent did not contract the diseases. So, everyone exposed, every human being exposed with various disease agent may not have a particular disease. This means, it is not only the causative agent that is responsible for the disease, but there are many other factors which is related to man, human being and his environment which contribute to the disease. So, according to epidemiological triad model theory, triad model or epidemiological triad or triangle theory, the every people those who are exposed to a particular disease agent may not have the disease. So, we may have the disease agent in our body, but we may not show the manifestation of or symptoms of particular diseases or signs of diseases because the disease is produced not only with the help of the causative agent, but also it is responsible for many other factors. So, there are many other factors such as it includes man host related factors and the environment related factors. Thus, epidemiological triad or epidemiological triangle is based on the communicable disease model or infectious disease model and is useful in showing the interaction and interdependence that is the uh, relationship between the agent, host and environment with the time. So, time of exposure or incubation period as used in the investigation of disease and epidemics. So, to investigate various communicable diseases or infectious diseases and various outbreak of epidemics, we use the epidemiological triad or epidemiological triangle because it is based on the communicable disease model or theory which is useful in showing the interactions or interrelationship or interdependence between the agent host environment with its time to a particular infectious or communicable disease. So, in short, epidemiological triad or triangle is which is useful in showing the interactions or interdependence or interrelations between the agent, host, environment with the, the time. Time is incubation period or well, the complete course of the illness that varies from diseases to disease. Now, let us talk about the, the second part that is components of epidemiological triad or triangle. The components of or components of epidemiological triad. For the occurrence of any disease in man or human being, the three things are required that is agent, host and environment. So, to occurrence of any diseases in a human being, three things are required which are one is agent, second one is B is host and last one is environment. So, these three factors that is agent, agent is an external agent and host, host is a human being or the animal who harbor the microorganism, the host and environment, our surroundings. So, these three factors are referred as an epidemiological triad or epidemiological triangle which shows the agent, host, environment, interaction or interdependence. So, relationship between the agent, host and environment. So, the first factor is agent. Agent is the pathogenic microorganism which cause any disease. So, agent is the cause of the disease. Then, host. Second factor is host. The host is an organism or human being or animal that harbors or that lodges the disease that may manifest the signs and symptoms of a particular disease. The to whom the disease occur that is the host. The third factor is the environment that is the surrounding or the condition that allows the disease transmission. Thus, environment also influence or it is also one of the factor to produce a disease and which allows the disease transmission. So, in short, to occurrence of a, any disease, the three factors are required that is agent, host and environment. So, you can see that three uh, circle here. First one is agent that is related to uh, external agent or pathogenic organism. The second circle is the susceptible host or the human being or animal who shows the manifest the disease. And third factor is the environment that is favorable environment for example the weather. So, these three 
circles are interrelated or interconnected and there is an interdependence in this place where it is a disease occurred. So, the presence of these three factors, agent, host, and environment, may not produce any disease unless which is interacted. So, this is the only place that is the three circles that is agent, host, environment is interacted. So, the disease triangle or disease develops when all these three factors interact, that is agent, host, environment. So, whenever there is no interaction between the agent, host, environment, there won't be any infectious or communicable diseases. This is about the disease triangle. So, to produce a communicable or infectious diseases, we need a host, environment and a agent, that is pathogenic external agent and its interactions and interdependence. Now, we can see an example for the typhoid fever. So, agent of typhoid fever is Salmonella typhi. So, the infectious agent or pathogenic external agent is Salmonella typhi. Then, the host is, it occurs in a young age and more in males and those who are having less immunity power or resistance power and those who are not following the proper personal hygiene. So, these are the host related factors. So, it is occurring in a young age that is the host and environment influence is here polluted water. So, uh, typhoid is spread from polluted water and open defecations. So, defecating in an open place. So, now you see that the agent Salmonella typhi, the host young age males and uh, environmental factors such as polluted water and uh, open defecations are interrelated here. So, this interrelation causes the typhoid fever. So, when the Salmonella typhi and the young age or males with less immunity and lack of personal hygiene who is drinking polluted water and following the practice of open defecation is interrelated to produce a disease that is typhoid fever. So, this is an example of disease triangle or epidemiological triad. Now, let us talk in detail about the agent. So, an agent is the first link in the chain of disease transmission. So, for the disease transmission, the first factor is necessary that is the first link is or the first connector is the agent. So, definition of agent. So, a disease agent is defined as a substance that is either living or non-living. So, living or non-living substance, a force that is tangible or intangible force or a factor whose presence or its over presence that is excessive more presence or relative absence or lack is essential for the occurrence of a disease process such as a microorganism or chemical substance or form of radiations etc are example for the agent. So, a disease agent is defined as a substance that is living or non-living, a force that is tangible or intangible or a factor whose presence, excessive presence, more presence or lack or absence, relative absence is essential for the occurrence or manifestation or initiation of a disease process or disease especially infectious disease such as microorganism, pathogenic organism, chemical substance or different forms of radiation etc. So, this is about the definition of agent. So, it is a substance or it is a force or it is a factor which presence or excessive presence or the relative lack are essential for the initiation or production of a disease process. Next is classification of agent. I have used a simple mnemonic. Actually, there is no need of any mnemonic. You can uh, understand and you can by heart easily. But if you required only, you go through with. Uh, my mnemonic is after BSc passing, MSc nursing. Okay. So, after BSc passing, you can go for the MSc nursing course. So, that is a mnemonic. So, after stands for agent. We are talking about classification of agent. BSc stands for biological agent. Passing, that is P stands for physical agent, M stands for mechanical agent, then S stands for social agent, then C stands for chemical agent, then nursing stands for nutrient agent and OK stands for others. There are many other agents. So, if you really need only, you can follow this mnemonic or you can simply by heart biological, physical, chemical, social, mechanical, nutrient agent and other agents. So, classification of agents includes mainly seven agents so that is biological, physical, chemical, mechanical, nutrient, social and others agent. Let us discuss one by one the classification of the agents. First is biological agent. Biological agent is also known as infectious agent. So, biological agent or infectious agent might be 
living agents so in the definition we said agent may be living and non living so usually the biological agent or infectious agent might be living agent or it may be pathogenic microorganism usually this microorganism agent is found in the reservoir of any infections reservoir means where it present where it is lodged where it is breed that is in man in animals in insects or in the soil so usually the biological agent or infectious agent is found or seen in the reservoir of any specific infection such as man animals insects soil etc then biological agent includes a bacteria virus fungus protozoa and others such as parasites prions other microbes that is poisonous various poisonous creatures etc so generally the biological agent or infectious agent comes under essential causal factor because without this a particular agent there won't be any production of the disease such agent is called as essential causal factor so this biological or infectious agent is a essential causal factor to the occurrence of a or production of any disease or for the disease causation the second agent classification is physical agent so the disease can be produced with various physical agents such as extreme heat extreme cold then pressure increased pressure radiations from electricity from sound or noise and other such as from light vibration etc so these are the some of the physical agent which cause the disease in a human being that is heat cold pressure radiations electricity sound noise and other such as light vibration etc so excessive light or dim light will cause various problems especially the physical agent is related to occupational diseases third one is chemical agent chemical agents can be classified as endogenous and exogenous endogenous are the chemicals which is produced inside the body and exogenous are the chemicals which is present in the outside the body so endogenous and exogenous chemicals so chemical agents can be classified into endogenous agents and exogenous agents so there are many chemicals which is produced in the body such as urea serum bilirubin ketones uric acid calcium carbonate which cause different type of problem in the body urea lead to uremia serum bilirubin excessive serum bilirubin cause jaundice ketones bodies cause ketosis uric acid collection will cause gout accumulation cause gout disease calcium carbonate will lead to kidney stones etc so these are the endogenous chemical agents next is exogenous chemical agents so the chemical agents which are present outside the body and which can cause some diseases in human being is called exogenous chemical agents which includes metals that is heavy metals like uh, lead which lead to lead poisoning then uh, highly reactive metals etc all comes under metals then fumes that is noxious gases then gases like uh, such as methane nitrogen carbon dioxide etc that is gases then fourth one is dust so dust allergy or dust also cause some diseases in human being that is called as pneumoconiosis the disease caused from dust and various dust allergens is called as pneumoconiosis like silicosis asbestosis etc then various allergens chemical allergens which produce disease then acids and bases various acids and bases then others which includes insecticides which consist chemicals then solution and solvents for example petroleum then vapors mist aerosols etc which all lead to uh, some diseases in a human being this all comes under exogenous chemical agent so exogenous chemical agent is the chemical agent which is produced outside the human body which act as a agent chemical agent and which produces some diseases in a human being for example metals fumes gases dust allergens acids and bases and others such as insecticides solutions and various chemical solutions and solvents vapors mist aerosols etc the next agent is mechanical agents so mechanical agent as the term indicate mechanical agent is something is related to machines especially in occupational settings there are many machines so chronic friction from the uh, continuous contact with the machines and other mechanical forces or sharp objects all may lead to certain uh, problems or disease conditions that may lead to trauma injuries fractures sprains accidents dislocations and even death the fifth agent is a nutrient agent so the nutrients also can cause some diseases in human being it act as a, an agent so an excess or deficit lack or absence of nutrients lead to certain nutritional 
disorders or de nutritional deficiencies so for example anemia protein energy malnutrition vitamin deficiencies mineral deficiencies etc so the excess or deficit of or lack of various nutrients lead to nutritional deficiencies or nutritional disorders or diseases for example protein protein deficiency will lead to pem protein energy malnutrition or caloric energy malnutrition cem the fat excessive fat deposition will lead to obesity then excessive carbohydrate will lead to diabetes mellitus then lack of certain vitamins will lead to vitamin deficiencies then even minerals lack of minerals will lead to uh, mineral deficiencies for example iodine right. deficiency etc so these are the nutrient agent which produce certain diseases in human body such as protein fat carbohydrate vitamins and minerals then even water also is an another uh, nutrient agent which may also cause certain diseases excessive intake of water or, uh, or lack of water intake may lead to certain problems in human beings then sixth one is social agent so some of the social factors also which cause some diseases in human being social agents includes poverty smoking excessive smoking then excessive alcoholism alcoholism drug addiction sir social isolation or separation sedentary lifestyle will lead to uh, sedentary diseases maternal deprivation maternal deprivation means uh, death of the mother so maternal deprivation and other social agents also may lead to some diseases in human being so these are the some of the factors or agents which comes under uh, social agents that may lead to certain diseases in human beings then seventh one is others so there are some other agents that also can lead to certain diseases or act as a disease producing agent such as hormones lack of a body part or lack of a anatomical structure in the body then chromosomal factors genetic differences or chromosomal factors immunological factors lack of immunity that may lead to certain diseases so other agents includes hormones lack of body part or body structure that might be congenital then chromosomal factors chromosomal uh, defects or genetic defects then immunological factors or immune deficiencies etc these are the some of the other agents which act as a uh, agent under epidemiological triad to cause some particular diseases the second factor under epidemiological triad or triangle is host the meaning of host is host is a person or an animal that affords subsistence or lodgment to an infectious agent under natural conditions so host is a human being or a person or an animal which give a favorable uh, environment to live certain microorganism or pathogenic organism that is which afford the subsistence or lodgment to infectious agent under natural conditions so the host is a person or animal in which a microorganism pathogenic organism or infectious agent will harbor or develop thus human being is referred as a soil and the disease agent is uh, referred as a seed so usually the seed will grow in the soil so human being or animal is considered as a soil here in epidemiological triad and the, the disease agent or external agent is considered as the seed so the seed will grow in the soil like that uh, certain infectious agent uh, will uh, develop in the human being or uh, animals then let us talk about the host related factors so there are many host related factors which influence the uh, certain uh, production or develop or initiation of the certain diseases so host factors are the intrinsic factors that is uh, inbuilt factors it is considered inside intrinsic factors which influence that influence an individual's exposure susceptibility or response to a causative agent so there are many factors host related factors which influence the or determine the exposure rate exposure rate means contact with the microorganism susceptibility so the lodgement how much a human being can be lodge a particular microorganisms or to have many diseases susceptible to have certain diseases and the response in relation to uh, contact with the different disease agents or response to a causative agent thus there are many host factors which affect the individual's risk for exposure to certain agents such as age race sex breed strain purpose of uh, domestication so feed feeding habits dietary habits breeding practices sociological status etc so this all comes under certain host related factors
In general, the host factors or host related factors can be classified as demographic characteristics, biological characteristics, social and economic characteristics and lifestyle factors. So, the host related factors can be classified into four that is demographic characteristics, biological characteristics, social and economic characteristics and lifestyle factors. First one is demographic characteristics which includes age and sex of the a host or human being or man age and sex age means certain diseases are more frequent in certain age groups because measles are more common in childhood and cancer in the middle age people than atherosclerosis in the old age people so certain diseases are very common or more frequent in certain age groups next is sex so there are sex difference in disease occurrence that is some diseases are more common in a particular or specific gender so some diseases are more common in a specific gender for example diabetes mellitus and thyroid problems are more frequent in females uh, whereas heart diseases are more common in males so these are the sex differences in disease occurrence the second host related factors is biological characteristics such as hereditary or genetic factors of the host or human being biochemical values or levels such as cholesterol level etc then various uh, or different type of blood groups of the human uh, being then immunological factors or uh, immunity status uh, or resistance power and even physiological functions so first one is hereditary or genetic factors so some of the harmful genes in the constitutions may give rise to certain diseases so it may cause certain diseases because of the presence of harmful genes in the during the constitution of the uh, body such as hemophilia color blindness albinism congenital defects and others such as uh, hypertension diabetes etc all may develop through genetic factors or hereditary influences then social and economic characteristics which includes the socio-economic status of the human being, education status, nutritional status, occupational status, stress level, stress and strain level, marital status, housing conditions, etc. All may lead to uh, certain diseases and this all comes under social and economical characteristics, host related characteristics. For example, in relation to nutrition, the poor nutrition leads to deficiency disorders. We are already discussed this matter in uh, like uh, nutrient agent. So, but it is a host related factors. The habit of the nutrition practice or dietary practice of the human being may lead to certain diseases such as poor nutrition lead to deficiency disorders such as PEM, CEM, nutritional anemia, hypervitaminosis so that is excessive uh, intake of vitamin lead to hypervitaminosis so and excessive uh, uh, fatty food may lead to obesity and uh, cholesterol etc. So this may be a whole dietary practice of the uh, human being. Thus it is considered as the host related factors under socio-economic characteristics. Then related to occupation of the host or occupation of the man or human being. That may lead to certain occupational diseases such as pneumoconiosis. That is all dust allergies uh, is called as pneumoconiosis, lead poisoning, accidents, uh, etc. So this is another one host related factor that is occupation which lead to certain occupational diseases. So there are many occupational hazards or workplace hazards such as physical assaults, chemical assaults, biological assaults, mechanical assaults, psychosocial assaults which includes psychological stress and strain, then psychosomatics related to stress and strain, various uh, somatic symptoms and even social assaults, economic problems related to economic problems etc. all comes under psychosocial assaults and there are others that is ergonomical assault means uh, due to continuous uh, different posture in the industry or in the factory a person may have back pain or some other problem so that comes under ergonomical assault so this is an another post related factors which comes under socio-economic characteristics so fourth factor is lifestyle factors which includes personality traits uh, different personality of the host uh, living habits of the individual following customs traditions uh, uh, different practice of culture, habits, etc. Behavioral patterns of the human being or individual or man. Then physical exercise. Lack of exercise will lead to certain sedentary problems, sedentary lifestyle diseases. Then use of alcohol, drugs, smoking, etc. will lead to certain problems and cancers. 
ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ కస్టమ్స్ అండ్ హ్యాబిట్స్ ప్రెజ్యుడిషియల్ కస్టమ్స్ సో కంటిన్యూయింగ్ సర్టన్ ప్రాక్టీసెస్ ఇన్ ద లైఫ్ స్టైల్ ప్రాక్టీసెస్ ఎస్ ఎ కస్టమ్స్ లీడ్ టు సర్టన్ ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ కామన్ ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ స్మోకింగ్ విల్ లీడ్ టు లంగ్ క్యాన్సర్ ఓపెన్ ఎయిర్ డిఫికేషన్ ప్రాక్టీస్ విల్ లీడ్ టు హుక్ వామ్ ఇన్ఫెస్టేషన్స్ ఇన్ ద హోస్ట్ అండ్ రిగార్డింగ్ ద బిహేవియర్స్ సో బిహేవియర్ ఆఫ్ ద హ్యూమన్ బీయింగ్ ఆర్ హోస్ట్ రిలేటెడ్ ఫ్యాక్టర్ ఇస్ హ్యూమన్ బిహేవియర్స్ సో దీస్ ఆర్ ద సమ్ ఆఫ్ ద యాక్టివిటీస్ మే బీ ఇన్ఫ్లుయెన్స్డ్ బై హ్యూమన్ బిహేవియర్ సచ్ ఆస్ ల్యాక్ ఆఫ్ ఫిజికల్ ఎక్సర్సైజ్ ఎక్సెసివ్ ఇన్టేక్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్కోహాల్ ఆర్ సర్టన్ డ్రగ్స్ దెన్ దీస్ హోల్ లీడ్స్ టు సర్టన్ ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ల్యాక్ ఆఫ్ ఎక్సర్సైజ్ విల్ లీడ్ టు లైఫ్ స్టైల్ డిసీజెస్ ఆర్ నాన్ కమ్యూనికబుల్ డిసీజెస్ అండ్ ఎక్సెసివ్ కన్సెప్షన్ ఆఫ్ డ్రగ్స్ విల్ లీడ్ టు డ్రగ్ అడిక్షన్స్ ఈవెన్ ఆల్కోహలిజం ఎక్సెట్రా so next is the environment so the third component of the epidemiological triad is environment or third component of the epidemiological uh, triangle is environment environmental factors are extrinsic factors that is outside influencing factors so host factor we said it is an intrinsic factor but uh, environment is considered as a extrinsic factors outside factors of course which affect or influence the agent as well as the host and which provide the opportunity for exposure to certain agents or certain host so environmental factors are extrinsic factors which affect the both agent as well as the host and which also influence the opportunity for exposure it provide many opportunity for the exposure to certain agents and the host the environmental factors include three factors that is physical factor biological factor and socio economic factors so environment can be classified as physical environment biological environment and socio economic environment as physical factors biological factors and socio economic factors first is physical environment physical environment includes physical factors such as geology that is nothing but geography then that includes climate season unsafe water air soil food housing etc all those physical factors which comes under physical environment which provide exposure to certain diseases or exposure to certain agents second is the biological environment that includes the biological factors such as animals insects plants rodents etc that can transmit to certain agent or certain infectious agent to produce a disease from the environment so biological agent includes the biological factors biological factors includes animals insects plants rodents etc that can transmit to certain disease agent or pathological agent or infectious agent thus produce a disease then third type is socio economic environment which includes socio economic factors such as crowding that is overcrowding sanitation sanitary conditions availability of the health services availability of the sub centers primary health centers other hospital facilities then practice of customs habits culture of the people beliefs of the people human being attitude of the people and religion and religious beliefs of the people etc all comes under uh socio economic factors in the socio economic environment which directly or indirectly will cause uh, certain diseases in a human being or which provide certain exposure to certain diseases so this is about the third component of the epidemiological triad that is a uh, uh, environment so so far we have discussed about the epidemiological triad or epidemiological triangle this triad includes uh, three important components uh, that is a uh, agent host environment so having different agent host environment uh, may not cause a disease unless it interact each other so when there is an interrelations or interdependence or interaction between the agent host and environment it produce certain diseases especially an infectious or communicable diseases thus epidemiological triad is one of the disease causation model or theory or concept in epidemiology so thanks for watching hope this video really benefits in your studies if you feel it is really worth and benefit please like share and subscribe my channel so stay tuned with angel health academy for the next uh, educational or community related video thank you